Good morning. And a very warm welcome to our service this morning and also to those who will be watching the recording later in the week. In our theme today, we will explore Jesus' teaching in another part of the Sermon on the Mount and learn how he encourages us to go beyond the letter of the law and see how right thinking in our heart is as important as right action. And now Lorna has a few intimations. Good morning. Many of you may know that we were in uh, the process of appointing a new community youth worker, and I'm happy to be able to say that he is now uh, started. He started at the beginning of the month, and I'm also let, able to let you know who he is, which has been under wraps until he was officially started. So his name is uh, Josh Key, and uh, Josh is very local. His family stays up at Rosewell, uh, and that's where he comes from. He has recently uh, completed a BA Honours in Theology, Mission and Ministry with a specialism in youth work. And he has also gained further experience over about a year and a bit up serving with the youth ministry team at Gorebridge Parish Church, uh, where he finished uh, last autumn. It is really exciting uh, to have Josh come on board to give us uh, momentum in our youth ministries, to have his gifts and all his experience coming on board to help us along, and also in our parish grouping as we develop all of our children's and youth ministry, reaching out in different ways in our community. If you are able to come along to the joint service for all our parish grouping, uh, which is now planned for Sunday the 26th of February, at three o'clock in the afternoon up at the La Last Way Leisure Centre. Um, if you're able to come to that service, you're very welcome. And also, there'll be a chance then to hear a little bit from Josh as he's interviewed uh, through the service. I hope you are excited about the prospect of having Josh with us, coming alongside us uh, in the coming years as we seek to come alongside young people and share God's love with them uh, in, our, in and around us. And if you are excited about having Josh with us as our community youth worker and you'd like to contribute uh, towards our share of the cost of employing him through this initial year uh, as a start, that will be super. You might wish to give a one-off gift towards having him here or donate on a more regular basis, but all gifts will be gratefully received. And I think there'll be more details in due course about the special account that will be set up uh, to receive funds uh, for his support. But that's something you might be thinking and praying about, would you like to be giving and being a part of contributing in that way. But we do so look forward uh, to having uh, Josh with us. Thank you. As we come to worship, let us take a few moments to be still before the call to worship. We come to worship knowing that God wants us to live up to his high standards. May we learn to live as he asks treating everyone as Jesus would. And we join to sing our opening hymn this morning. Great God, your love has called us here.
Let us join together in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, we come before you today with joy and gladness, knowing that you are a God of integrity, truth and wisdom. We come to worship in adoration for all you are. We give thanks for your son Jesus, who lived without sin and lived life in all its fullness, leading and guiding us to live lives full of honesty and sincerity. Forgive us, Lord, when we fail to make good choices, when our decisions are not made with honesty or integrity. Forgive us the times we hurt others by our words and actions, when we make judgments of others and thinking that our decisions are the best. Lord, open our eyes afresh to your splendour, open our hearts to your love and purpose, our minds to your purpose, and our spirits to your presence. And so assured of your forgiveness and renewing power, help us to praise you, not just in words, but in lives offered to you in joyful service. And we pray now the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And we join to sing now, Hymn 538, God be in my head and in my understanding. And since there's only one verse, we will sing it twice. first reading this morning is taken from the Old Testament in the book of Deuteronomy, and we read at chapter 30, verses 15 to 
to 20. Today I am giving you a choice between good and evil, between life and death. If you obey the commands of the Lord your God, which I give you today, if you love him, obey him, and keep all his laws, then you will prosper and become a nation of many people. The Lord your God will bless you in the land that you're about to occupy. But if you disobey and refuse to listen and are led away to worship other gods, you will be destroyed. I warn you here and now, you will not live long in that land across the Jordan that you are about to occupy. I am now giving you the choice between life and death, between God's blessing and God's curse. And I call heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Choose life. Love the Lord your God, obey him and be faithful to him. And then you and your descendants will live long in the land that he promised to give your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This morning we have an additional uh, Old Testament reading, which comes from Psalm 119, and the first part of that reading, verses 1 to 8. And it forms, as you, if you like, a little stepping stone between the passage that George has just read in honouring the law of God as Moses gave it to the people in, uh, as they were going through the wilderness. And we have that sense of the preciousness of God's law and the people of God following that. As we come to Jesus' teaching in a moment in Matthew's Gospel, he's encouraging his listeners to go deeper and not just to follow the letter of the law, but to follow it with all their heart. And so 109, Psalm 119 is a little stepping stone for us as we come also to hear the psalmist say, let's follow all the commands and the statutes and the ordinances of God with all our heart. And so we're going to read this together responsively and do that. So over here on the left-hand side of the church, my left, um, if you folks can start off and you do the odd verses, so all those parts that are not in bold, and you folks over here, if you can read the parts that are in bold, the, the even verses as we go through. So let's read together. The glories of God's law. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. The second passage this morning is taken from the Gospels, the Gospel according to Matthew, at chapter 5, and we read verses 21 to 30. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. And we are reading the teaching about anger. You have heard that people were told in the past, do not commit murder. Anyone who does will be brought to trial. But now I tell you, whoever is angry with his brother will be brought to trial. Whoever calls his brother, you good for nothing, will be brought before the council. And whoever calls his brother a worthless fool will be in danger of going to the fire of hell. So if you are about to offer your gift to God at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar Go at once and make peace with your brother, and then come back and offer your gift to God. 
If someone brings a lawsuit against you and takes you to court, settle the dispute with him while there is time before you get to court. Once you are there, he will hand you over to the judge, who will hand you over to the police, and you will be put in jail. There you will stay, I tell you, until you pay the last penny of your fine. You have heard that it was said, do not commit adultery. But now I tell you, anyone who looks at a woman and wants to possess her is guilty of committing adultery with her in his heart. So if your right eye causes you to sin, take it out and throw it away. It is much better for you to lose a part of your body than to have your whole body thrown into hell. If your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is much better for you to lose one of your limbs than for your whole body to go to hell. Amen. Thank you, George. I'm going to join to sing again and a hymn that helps us reflect further on the passages that we've heard about God's law and our keeping it and how that leads us in, in the words of this hymn, to exploring God's words together today. And so we join to sing, look upon us, blessed Lord, take our wandering thoughts and guide us. Let us pray. Lord, as we come to your words today, as we were singing there, we come with expectancy to your living word and your word to us today. May you lead us by your spirit in our listening, in our learning, in our understanding, and in our responding. Thank you for being with us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. In exploring our passage from Matthew today, 
uh, Tom Wright begins in his commentary with a scenario from the world of politics. A leading politician makes a gesture of contempt towards the opposition. Someone on the other side reacts angrily. Soon dozens of people are on their feet shouting and insults fly to and fro. Out on the street, supporters of the rival parties jeer at each other, then begin to jostle and threaten. Fists start to fly, knives come out, and by the time the police arrive, two people have been killed. The other side vows revenge. In that danger of anger erupting into violence, we might also think of the example of road rage, where all too often angry words can very quickly escalate to the use of fists or worse. There is always the risk of anger erupting into physical violence. However, Jesus' teaching on avoiding being angry with another person goes deeper here in his teaching than avoiding that anger because it might lead to violence. Throughout the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is teaching about a whole new radical approach to life and relationships. He acknowledges God's law from the past, setting out key measures such as thou shalt not kill, by which his people through that law would honor God in his heart and purpose of love and also be looking after each other not to cause any harm. And yet, Jesus goes still deeper now in his teaching and encouraging his listeners and us to honour God and to look after each other. In his sermon on the Mount, as Tom Wright again describes, Jesus takes the commands of the law and shows how they provide a blueprint for a way of being fully genuinely and gloriously human. This new way which Jesus had come to pioneer and make possible goes deep down into the roots of personality and produces a different pattern of behaviour altogether. Our passage in Deuteronomy reminds us how vital it was for God's people to keep his commands, to follow his ways, to be faithful to him as he was faithful to them, to look after each other, and in so doing, to choose life and to be distinctive in their walk with God as his people. And yet, Jesus wants to take his listeners deeper now because it becomes evident that you can keep the letter of the law in never killing or stealing or keep, uh, committing adultery. And yet, in your words and actions, you can fall short of all God asks for and is because in our behaviors, we fall short of seeking to be holy because God is holy. As God says in Leviticus, you are to be holy because I, the Lord, am holy and I have set you apart. Jesus urges his listeners towards a new path with a desire to be pure and blameless because God is pure and blameless. And that meant thinking about their very attitudes of heart, not just their actions. As William Barclay says, it is not enough not to strike a man. The only thing that is enough is not even to have a hard feeling against him within the heart. It is every kind of selfish anger that we are speaking about here. Whether that's a sudden blaze of anger that can lead to words of contempt 
for another person, or whether it's a smoldering, long-lived anger that feeds on undying resentment. As James writes in his letter in the New Testament, you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. A person's anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. If we become selfishly angry in different situations, we fail to mirror God's holiness and love in that attitude and behavior. We fail to acknowledge God's love for the other person. We fail to recognize that they also are a cherished child of God, made in his image. Our inmost thoughts are under God's scrutiny. And that high bar of integrity in thought and attitude is, of course, impossible to meet on our own, as Tom Wright again points out. Impossible, that is, until we consider Jesus. Wright says, Jesus himself refused to go the way of anger. Instead, he took the anger of his enemies within Israel and of Israel's own enemies, the Romans. He took those onto himself and died under its load. From that point on, reconciliation is not simply an ideal we might strive for, It is an achievement, an accomplishment, which we in turn must now embody in our lives of faith in following Jesus. And Jesus continues to set the bar very high in relation to the command, thou shalt not commit adultery. Once again, Jesus teaches that it is not only the forbidden action, but also the forbidden inner thought that is guilty in the sight of God. As William Barclay again guides, we need to understand what Jesus is saying here. He's not speaking of the natural, normal desire, which is part of human instinct and human nature in attraction. The person in the wrong is the one who looks at a woman with a deliberate intention of lusting after her. He deliberately uses his eyes to awaken his lust and stimulate his desire. No, says Jesus, you must deal ruthlessly with the first signs of lust. His lessons to pluck out eyes and to cut off hands in order to avoid being drawn into lust are, of course, exaggerations. But they make the point forcibly. Deal ruthlessly with any lustful temptation and do not get drawn astray where once again our inmost thoughts are judged by God. To fall into the trap of lust is to fail God and ourselves in our lack of desire to be blameless and also harms the one who is the object of lust as they are not given the respect and value they are due in God's eyes. Thomas Aquinas was perhaps the greatest of the philosopher theologians of the Middle Ages. And some of his thinking and writing offers further insight into the attitude we must seek. He wrote, three things are necessary for the salvation of man. To know what he ought to believe, to know what he ought to desire, and to know what he ought to do. For Aquinas, neither right beliefs nor right actions alone were enough. Rather, it is the transformation of our desires, the inner orientation of our hearts, along with right belief and action, that demonstrate the life of God within us. He is pointing to there being a need to line up head 
and heart and hands in all we are and do and seek to be for God. And so our daily prayer needs to be that by God's Spirit, God will help us give our lives wholly to him in mind, in sincerity and humility of heart. And so also then in true action. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, you ask us to transform our thoughts, feelings, and behavior as we follow you. Help us today to have the selflessness and obedience to choose your path and help us to follow that even when we have to make tough choices. Thank you that we know your way leads us into the fullness of life. Help us to support each other on the road and to delight together to choose the way of life and all that pleases and honours you. In your name we pray. Amen. And we're going to join to sing again. And our one that him is one that helps us to think again about choosing life and pursuing God's heart and ways for us as we reflect on all that Jesus has done for us and his example and inspiration for all we seek to be and become for the Lord. We join to sing the hymn, here is love vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood.
We join together now in our prayers of thanksgiving and our prayers for others and ourselves. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank and praise you that you have taught us another way, that you have given us life in all its fullness. Thank you that when we seek you with all our heart, we are choosing that life. Thank you that you have offered us a different path, a path of truth, a path of humility, a path of wisdom, a path of integrity, a path of honesty. Through your example here on earth, you showed us how to live peaceful lives, how to be reconciled with each other, how to follow you and seek wholeness. Thank you that we have all of that in you. You reconciled us with God on the cross and we are truly grateful. God who comforts as the death toll rises following the deadly earthquake in Turkey and Syria and rescuers struggle to cope with the level of devastation, the brutal weather and the war in Syria. We can feel a sense of despair and hopelessness. There is so much loss and grief. We pray for everyone whose lives have been dramatically altered by this disaster. We pray for the injured, the grieving, and for those who have lost everything. As we watch the heartbreaking images of people sitting in rubble that was once their home, it's hard to see how anyone can recover from such devastation. We give thanks for the relief efforts beginning to come, and we pray for strong links and cooperation so that all goes to help those suffering the most. Let's take a moment of silence to think and pray for the people affected in Turkey and Syria. God who brings justice and peace. We pray for world leaders in these difficult days of widespread hardship and rising global tensions. Thank you for those who walk humbly with you, who seek your wisdom and guidance for the way ahead, and who are men and women of integrity in their desires and purpose. We pray especially again for peace to be restored in Ukraine. We pray for leaders as they work together to bring about a swift end to the war, while at the same time avoiding an escalation in the conflict. And we pray for other places of conflict and for all those who seek to bring words and actions that will lead towards reconciliation. Thank you for their patience, courage, and determination to keep pressing in until peace is secured. Help all of us see people from other nations, especially those very different to our own, as your children, as part of one humanity precious in your sight. We pray that especially, Lord, on this Racial Justice Sunday for 2023. Help us to raise our awareness of racism. God, be in our head and in our understanding. 
Help us to see and to recognize the dignity and value of all people. God, be in our eyes and in our looking. Help us to speak out against hatred, division and racism. God, be in our mouth and in our speaking. Help us to be compassionate to all affected by racism and hatred. God, be in our heart and in our thinking. Help us to go out into the world doing justice, loving mercy and walking humbly, bringing your love to others in our community. God of love, with Valentine's Day on the horizon, we are thankful for the people we love and who love us. We take a moment also to pray for those known to us, giving thanks with those in a place of celebration and remembering those for whom we are concerned at present in their health, in a time of loss, in a time of trouble or uncertainty, in any kind of need. We lift them to you now in the stillness. Loving God, bring the comfort and strength of your presence to all. With the offerings we bring today, given here and in other ways, we thank you for all your good gifts to us. May all we bring be used to spread your love in our world, to your glory and praise. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. As we come to our closing hymn this morning, I would belatedly welcome Kenny <laughs> to be with us as our organist. Thank you very much for being with us today and Kenny will also be with us in the coming weeks. Thank you, Kenny, for being with us. And we join to sing our closing hymn, another hymn that speaks of God being our all in all, first in our hearts. The wonderful hymn, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart.
of immeasurable love and majesty. You have told us and shown us what is good. You have made known what is required of all of us in living after your own heart. May you empower and embolden us as we go from this place to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly before you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you now and evermore.